So, you know, again, you have to work and rehearse, and uh, I mean, it's not something you just do like that. So, uh, we can do it. But you have a trained voice, I mean, can, can you sing as a new musical for instance? Never tried. No? I never tried. Never wanted to? Uh, no, no. no. It's not because you have uh, Dick Donner or Spielberg that it's not a risk. You never know what could happen. That's why, why the movie business is a kind of gamble. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if the movie's going to be successful. It's not a matter of name. It's a matter of script. And when I read Highlander, I thought it was a really good script. And then I saw Russell Mulcahy's video. Russell had made a movie called Razorback. Mm -hmm. So uh, you could see the visuals in Razorback and the quality of them. So, uh, um, you know, the risk is the script, not the director. O filme tem duas versões, a americana e a europeia. Qual delas você prefere? They are exactly the same except for one scene. That's all. So, uh, Didn't they change the, the, the sound, soundtrack and sound? No, no. Same the soundtrack, same soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. You just cut one scene in the American version. With that, with the, your girl? And with the little girl, which was an important scene because that explains uh, right. Rachel, but uh, they wanted to cut it. What do you want? You. You're Connor McLeod. Maybe I am. You're Connor McLeod, wounded in battle and driven from your village of Glen Finnan. Five years ago. Oh, Você tem uma explicação por que o filme fracassou nos Estados Unidos? Because it wasn't promoted, because the studio didn't back it up, uh, because they didn't put the uh, uh, print and advertising in the movie. So, I mean, you know, you need some advertising to make a movie successful. So that's what happened, because they didn't like the movie, and because the, the producers uh, sued the studio uh, five weeks before they released the picture, and they won the case. So the studio already didn't like the movie, so they just dropped it. But uh, the Frenchmen are very fond of the film. I mean, it's a sort of... Uh, well, not just the French, I mean, all over the world, but even in America. I mean, it's a big, big cult movie in America. It became a big cult movie later. In video, especially. Yeah, video, TV, uh, everywhere. I love the film, it's very difficult, right? Why did you it? I was interested in Marco Ferrari, that's all. You don't have a script with Marco Ferrari. You don't have? No, no. How do you work then? Well, he just tells you, he tells you a story or whatever, and uh, then you have a script, but you never have a script to read. And I was interested in the guy. I was interested in, uh, you know, him as a, as a director. So you do, don't improvise on the, on the, the shooting? Yeah, you just do sometimes. But you always do, in every movie. You improvise. I mean, not everything, but sometimes, you know. Eu estava em Cannes quando I Love You foi apresentado, e naquele momento você estava em todas as capas de revistas. Era o auge da sua popularidade. Mesmo assim, eles não gostaram do filme, né? It's a difficult movie. It's like, you know, I mean, uh, if you take a movie like To Kill a Priest, I mean, uh, the press liked the movie very much. The audience didn't like the movie because it's a difficult movie. It's a difficult subject. You know, when you make a movie about a Polish priest being ass assassinated in Poland and all this, uh, why would people uh, go and pay six, five, four dollars to see that movie? Because, it's, I mean, it, it sounds pretty boring in some ways and uh, but it was interesting for me to make these movies after great so highlander subway just to know if i could do something else and to know also if i was liking it and uh i enjoyed very much all these movies uh, with marco with anieska holland with uh with um, um michael cimino but it's not for me it's not for me. I'm not a character actor. I need to use what I have inside so I can transpose into a character. But I can't compose. Eu li na Premiere Francesa, agora recente, sobre o Max e Jeremy, onde você dizia que o filme foi escrito especialmente para você. Yeah, and it was very close to me. I mean, it reminds me a lot of Subway in what the character is. I mean, he's very childish. He loves TV. He's a hitman. 
uh, and uh, um, you know, he, he just moves around, he's very unconscious, he goes for it, he's very impulsive. Um, and uh, so on that level, he's very much like Fred in Subway. So he's very close to me. Mas do jeito que você está falando, eu fico com a impressão que o Max Germe vai ser comprado pelos americanos e vai ser refeito. They already bought it. They did? Mm -hmm. Well, did sound, uh, why doesn't the, the French films travel well? I mean, they're, they're very inter interesting, but they have to be remade. Because I think uh, they, are, they, they might be from time to time. It's not the case in Max and Jeremy because it's a very entertaining and very charming movie. But most of the French movie are trying to be too close to the reality of life instead of trying to get out of it and make people dream, entertain people. They try to stay too close to what, uh, you know, real in life. We don't need that because we experience that every day. So we need to escape that reality. And that's the power of American pictures or sometimes of movies like Nikita or Subway or even Max and Jeremy. You escape that reality because uh, you see you're looking at a story. And that's what's important in the, in the movie business. E quando você vai ao cinema, que tipo de filme você escolhe? Action, adventures, thrillers, uh, movies that makes me escape from life. You wouldn't go to see I Love You or to Kill a Priest? No, I don't think so. <laughs> God. Keep up your God! Oh. Lambert fala de seu novo filme, Face a Face. Eu confesso que não sou muito admirador do moço, mas tem gente que gosta. Ele é até superstar na França, onde seus olhos vesgos fazem o um maior sucesso. Neste bloco, Lambert vai falar de seu novo filme e de alguns projetos. Na tua carreira tem um filme também que a gente ainda não assistiu, chamado The Priceless Beauty. Eu queria que você falasse um pouco sobre ele. Mm -hmm. Well, that I don't talk about this movie because uh, the, what happened in this, uh, in this film is we signed a script with a director and as soon as we'd, we'd been signed, uh, the producers fired the director and they started to direct the movie themselves. So we went into a lawsuit and everything because it's oh. not a way of doing things. So I don't like to talk about this movie. I'm sorry, I, no, just, uh, okay. I, went and, uh, I just went and asked you about, you work with a Brazilian actress. Yeah, Claudia Ohana. Mm -hmm. I just want to know if you, you had it. Uh, She's good very nice. We had a good time, but everybody was very miserable because we had signed with the director. You know, and when mm -hmm. they fired the director, I was very upset because you don't do that. You give people a chance. You don't trap them. And uh, what happened? They trapped us. I am Salvatore Giuliano. You are both. Foi difícil trabalhar com o Michael Timino no Siciliano? He's a very clever guy, very interesting, and uh, um, it was special because he's very, he doesn't give you a lot of room. I mean, it's his vision and that's it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what makes it difficult. You need some freedom as an actor. Mm -hmm. But he's got his personal vision of the character. And I didn't have the same vision of the Sicilian, so, you know, it was like conversation and conversation. We never, we never had an argument, but we're just talking. Esse é outro filme que tem duas versões, a americana e a europeia. Qual delas você prefere? I haven't seen none of them. I don't go to see my movies. I generally see them once and that's it, but I haven't seen the Sicilian because in the, the time they were editing, I was in Europe, and then when I came back to America, the movie had been released yet, and... Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have to see it, so I didn't see it. Highlander 2, alguma coisa não deu certo. O que, que foi? 
I think visually and on an action level, special effects, optical effects, the movie was great. Mm -hmm. I think story-wise was the problem, but that we knew about it. I didn't have script approval, so when the producers decided to shoot, I had to go. So we tried to fix whatever we could on the set, which is always a mistake and not possible anyway. So uh, um, that was it. But we had fun, you know, with the action sequences and all that was happening in the movie. And that's all. That's all. And the movie was highly successful everywhere uh, because people were waiting for, you know, the sequel. Uh, in some ways, it was more successful than number one on a money level, but I think people were a uh, little disappointed, but everybody was. Continuam a planejar um terceiro Islander, não? They're still planning, but I have script approval on the third one, and uh, if it doesn't go back to number one, uh, I'm not going to do it. I mean, number three is going to be the direct sequel to number one. It means New York, seven years later, with the same transitions between past and present, with the same romantic side of the story, and that's very important for me. So yeah. we'll see. It's not... It's not certain. It's they're, be... they're writing it. They're writing it. Mm. Where are you going? I'm going to pick up the pizza. They're not delivering. Didn't you see the line was busy? It was, and then I got through. What's wrong? Nothing. Why are you backing up there? Face a face com o inimigo foi seu primeiro filme como produtor. Conta como foi a experiência. Well, it's just, uh, you know, I read uh, a script, then I optioned it, and then it started like that. I thought, well, if I bought the script, then I'm going to try to find some co-producers and some financing, and then try to make the movie. And that's what happened. Find the director was involved in the rewrite, in the casting sessions, in uh, location scoutings, and things like that. And uh, and then one day we started the movie. Mm -hmm. Sounds so simple. Well, it was very, uh, this one was very lucky. Yeah. How long did it, it take? To, uh, six gone? months. From the, from the script for the, the, the shooting? Yeah. 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 So it was very lucky. Você gostou da experiência de produzir? Yeah, well, you know, I was really involved with it before I started shooting. It's impossible to produce a movie and to act in it at the same time because when, when you've been shooting for 15 hours a day, uh, you don't want to go into a budget meeting or a script meeting or a set meeting or whatever. You want to go home, rehearse your lines and get ready for the next day. So that's what I was doing. I was just going home and that's why we needed some partners. People could handle the financing and be able to go into these meetings and talk about what was going on. That's all. It's, 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 apart from that, it's not possible. It's going to be a very polite conversation. I thought opening too quickly was a fatal mistake, in Jeff. Hmm. It is. Do you always open quickly? Are we talking about me or Jeff? You. It depends on the opponent. Você já tinha trabalhado com a sua esposa Diane Lane no outro filme, aquele que você não gosta de dizer nem o nome. Como é que foi trabalhar de novo com ela agora em face a face com o inimigo? It was fine, you know, she's an actress, I'm an actor, I'm looking at the character, I'm not looking at Diane, I'm looking at Kathy Shepard, the psychologist in the movie, I'm not looking at somebody I know. Because when you are acting, you are not yourself, you're somebody else. But you have an intimacy, you have some, uh, even, th that helps, doesn't it? I mean... No, you know, not really, you create a distance. You create a distance, you're not, it's a new person that you're facing. She doesn't talk like, you know, she talks to me in life. Even though it's the same voice, she's not saying the same thing. So she's somebody new. So, and I'm somebody new because I'm Peter Sanderson and I'm somebody else. Então a vantagem de fazer um filme junto é que você fica mais tempo com ela. Exactly, exactly. I could see her a little more than usual. No, no, I think he did a very good job. I think the movie is very suspenseful. I think it works very well. And, uh, you know, I'm not just saying that to sell the movie, but, I mean, we've, uh, we've made $60 million foreign, so there is a reason. I mean, people enjoy the movie tremendously uh, all over the, the Europe and Japan, and they were going back because 
what was interesting in the movie interesting in the movie is that it's a, the whole movie is a game so it's not just a screen and an audience the audience is in the screen and participate with the actors to the game that's been playing on the screen and that's 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 what the audience was saying coming out of the theaters in Europe and in Japan and we just opened in the states so I don't know the figures yet ele tem um filme novo de ação né chamado Fortress fala um pouquinho sobre ele It's a, it's an action movie, it's a pure action movie set in a high-tech jail of the future uh, and uh, from which you don't escape, so it's an escape movie. And uh, there is a very romantic background story because I'm trying to get out of the place to save my wife and my future kid. The director was... Stuart Gordon. Stuart Gordon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Você acabou de rodar mais um outro filme, né? Fala sobre Gunman. Well, that I haven't seen, I can't tell you anything about it. I just shot the movie. They finished the post-production ten, ten days ago. And uh, it's an action-adventure comedy set in the jungle of Colombia and uh, Mexico. And... Uh, it was shot in, in co-location? Yeah. In, in yeah. Mexico and yeah. Colombia? Yeah. And, uh, and it's with uh, Mario Van Peebles as a co-star. And uh, it was a lot of fun to do. That's a real more of a real comedy for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 